What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 9th of July in terms of my trades. And as you guys read in the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about Apple stock as well, my personal opinions on Apple stock, my insight on whether or not I think it's a good swing trade right now and of course we're also going to be talking about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the month of July in 2019 but before we do actually get into the topics of today's video all I ask from you guys is if you enjoy the content here on YouTube you find it valuable go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and join our discord group chat and our Facebook group down below if you want to be further connected with our community. Both of those links are 100% free of charge. So without further ado, guys, let me just minimize my screen. Let's talk about what is going on right now with the markets with about 25 minutes left in today's session. So you guys can see here the S&P 500 is currently down $1, down about 0.04%. Not much movement right now whatsoever. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 71 points right now down 0.27 percent and the nasdaq today guys followed by a strong rally in some of these bigger um tech companies it's actually up here it's actually the only index out of the three that we track and follow on this channel that is green it's up about 0.5 percent right now up about 38 to 40 dollars and again this is something uh this is uh due to the tech stocks that we're going to talk about here in a couple of minutes that are doing well some of them right so let's go back to the S&P. And if you guys were watching the markets this morning, we actually had a gap down in all of the indexes except for the NASDAQ. And let me show you guys what I'm talking about. The futures this morning were actually a bit red. We actually closed yesterday at about 29.76 and we gapped down 13 points this morning and we hit a low at 29.63 on the S&P 500. The Dow Jones, similar thing. We closed at 26.8 800, we gapped down to about 26,660, and from there, we've just been pretty much uptrending for the rest of the day, recovering from this gap down. And if we go back to the S&P, you can see a lot of the same, right? And the NASDAQ, it actually didn't see a gap down this morning. It actually popped up pretty aggressively from about 77.40 this morning at about 5 a.m. That's what the future was at Eastern Standard Time. And we can clearly see we hit a top at about 78.50 today, about a move of 100 points there. So let's go back to the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies, and let's talk about these technicals that I'm personally seeing. So if you've been watching my videos over the past couple of days, I've been talking about this level at about 2970, 2950-ish, 2975. This has been a level where the S&P has gotten hit and rejected at three times over the past year, once here, twice here, three times, literally two, three weeks ago towards the end of June before we broke out of that level of resistance, making it a new support and before we hit that all-time high at 29.95. So now that we are seeing a bit of a retracement in the S&P, it dropped again down to about 29.60 this morning, we want to see whether or not it's going to hold this old resistance level as a new support. And if we go a bit closer here, guys, on the 20-day one hour, Hour, it seems like we are holding that 2970 level as a new support over the past two trading days, despite the fact that we gapped down this morning, which is actually very, very good. Notice how on the 21st of June, we were at about 29.54. We broke out of that level. Again, like I said, we hit the all-time high. And notice how before we hit the all-time high, we hit a higher high at 29.70, and we've been holding this resistance level very nicely over the past trading days. We've literally tested it three separate occasions. If we go to the five-day, five-minute, we'll be able to see it. And in a second, I'll remove some of these drawings so I can draw a new wedge pattern that the S&P is currently in. But take a look how 
29.70, we hit it. Old resistance, new support, we held it. That's a very good sign. We held it again yesterday. And today, guys, again, despite the gap down, we broke the support very briefly. We popped above it again, and now we're looking like we are holding it as a support yet again. But like I just said, guys, let me just remove some of these drawings. The market is actually in a wedge yet again. Take a look. So we see this line of support here that I'm drawing. This is the support line of the wedge and this is the top resistance line of the wedge as well the one that I just drew for you guys and if I take a look and uh, remove some of these you'll be able to see it a bit clearer let me just remove this very quickly there we go so take a look guys the market right now on on the five day five minute it's making higher highs and high or not higher highs rather it's making higher lows and lower highs at the same time putting us in this wedge and the fact that we gap down today again in the morning to about 29.63 we held that level of the trend line that I just drew for a higher low from the previous this is a confirming sign that we're still in the wedge and the fact that we got rejected under the 180 SMA here which just happens to be under the resistance of that wedge that's another confirming sign that we're in the wedge still guys so this in my opinion is going to be interesting heading into tomorrow which way are we going to pop out here here for the S&P. If we honestly break out of this resistance here, that's going to be a bull flag. That's going to be a very bullish move for the S&P. Not only are we breaking the resistance of the wedge, we're also breaking that 180 SMA. And from there, you know, there's going to be levels that we need to continue to break before we potentially test all-time highs again and maybe go to $3,000. And some of those levels are going to be 29.80, roughly this level of resistance and this level as well, 29.95 obviously, and if we break that, we're going to be at all-time highs again. So very interesting the way the uh, the pattern here on the S&P has been acting. You know, we just need to pick a direction, and let's say we break the support here, and let's say we break 29.65, this support that we hit this morning on the gap down, and let's say we get to the 29.50s, that's going to be a pretty alarming break of pattern, and and at that point, guys, we're going to be breaking the 50 SMA support here on the 20-day one hour, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks. And that's going to be pretty alarming, especially, guys, you know, the critical, most critical support, you know, other than 2970, other than the 50 SMA here is 2950, guys. If we start to break down into those levels again, you know, remember I just told you on the one year, one day. You know, 2950 has been a level of resistance over the past couple of months. If we break back down into that, that's going to be a pretty, um, you know, bearish pattern in my personal opinion. And if we go to the Dow Jones, it's a lot of the same, right? We're, we're holding those old resistances right now as a new support. If we're hopping here to the 20-day one hour, we actually briefly broke today the 50 SMA support, and we're actually still trending below it, which is a bit alarming here, to be quite honest with you guys. Unlike the S&P that's actually holding old resistances right now as new supports, the Dow actually failed doing that to do that, right? Take a look here. You know, old resistances were at about 26,850, which is actually 100 points below where we are right now. So if the Dow were to really continue this uptrend on a technical basis, you know, we would want to see it hold this level. And you guys can see it failed doing so back on the 5th of July, um, heading into this week, starting off Monday when we gapped down and we broke below it. But there was hope yesterday, right? Because we were holding that 50 SMA. But the fact that we broke that level as well. That's not looking too good right now in terms of the Dow Jones on the 20-day one hour. And notice how if we go to the 10-day, you can see, you know, it's kind of in the similar wedge, right? Let me just remove this drawing very quickly this drawing as well. I notice a lot of the times, guys, I have all these just random, um, you know, drawings and trend lines here. So if that does confuse you, I do apologize. But notice how the Dow is making higher lows at the same time making lower highs and we're actually holding that 50 or rather the 180 SMA here on the 10 day 30 minute chart which if we were to break that to the bottom that would be a break of the 180 SMA support and the trend line support here that we 
are holding at a higher low from the previous. So that would be an even bigger bearish sign on the Dow Jones, which is what I'm watching. And obviously, if we were to break the resistance here, and if we were to eventually break that 50 SMA resistance here on the 10 day 30, and if we started to, you know, test back up into the 26 800s, 26 900s, you know, that's going to be what we need to see for a potential all time high here in the Dow Jones. So that's pretty much it for the S&P and the Dow. Just keep an eye on that wedge pattern. A lot of the similarities that we talked about in yesterday's video pertain to this pattern that we're talking about that I just talked about a couple of seconds ago. So just keep an eye on that. That's what I'm personally watching for tomorrow. If we go to the NASDAQ, guys, it's a bit different, again, because we gapped up today. We're up about 0.53%, but the NASDAQ, it's looking pretty solid on some of the longer term charts here. Notice how, you know, we're holding that 50 SMA. We're starting to trade above it. You know, we broke out of the 7,800 level of um, resistance today, which is very nice. Ideally, I would like to see this hold as a new support, right? This level that I just drew out for you guys, that would be ideal. If we pulled back, held that, then maybe filled the gap back up to, let's say, 7,900, that would be a good move there. And from there, if we were to break 7,900, guys, we may be going back to all-time highs. You know, if we're going to the 20-day, one hour very quickly, you know, again, unlike the Dow, this one is uptrending still. It's still trending above moving averages. We can see the break above. Again, 7,800 today. That was an old resistance. That's a good sign. Hopefully, we hold it as a new support again and fill the gap back up. So, it's very simple here, guys, what I'm seeing. This is not too hard to understand compared to the Dow and the S&P charts, which may be a bit more tricky, right? The NASDAQ is just strictly in an uptrend. You know, all the moving averages are pointing towards that. But the one thing that could happen here is a potential bearish cross. You know, if that does happen, guys, and we do break 7,800, maybe get back down to the 77s, maybe 76s, you know, we could be selling for, uh, you know, further down from there. But as of now, now, I'm just judging it based off of what the technicals are showing. And if you look very closely at the moving averages, the 50 SMA has not yet, uh, quite yet crossed below the 180. So the bearish cross has not happened yet. They're just simply laying on top of each other in terms of um, the moving averages here. So that is the analysis of the NASDAQ, guys. If we take a look at the five-day, five-minute, you know, a lot of the same. The gap up today actually took us out of that downwards trending channel that we were on, you know, over that sub off period that we saw over the past three, four days from 7,900 down to about 7,740. So if anything, this is a very bearish or uh, bullish rather sign for the NASDAQ since it is showing upwards momentum right now. So let's talk about um, the trading update very quickly. And if you guys have any questions, any comments about the overall market right now, drop a comment. Let me know what you think, what your opinions are. I would love to know. So like you guys read in the title, and you probably already got the hint that I'm in Apple. Yes, I'm in Apple, guys. Let's talk about my opinions right now for Apple as a swing trade. First of all, you know, we could talk about the NASDAQ right now, which is a tech heavy index, right? We obviously just covered it. And we can see again, like I said, this bullish pattern that the NASDAQ is on. So this actually gave me some confidence. The fact that we broke on this five day, five minute this morning, this was literally, literally at like 930 when the market opened, we saw that big run, you know, this actually gave me some confidence to hop into some of these, um, really just Apple, but just honestly, to just take a look at some of these tech stocks today. And the fact that we broke out very aggressively, you guys can see if, if I just show you on my, um, you know, uh, my little watch list here, my tech stocks watch list, Apple did quite well today. It did uh, not insanely well, but it's up about 0.54% today. And Amazon did exceptionally well today, up $32, up 1.7%. You know, we see Facebook today up 1.7%. We see Google today up 0.75%. So these are, you know, some of the stocks, really uh, the, the bulk of the stocks that are pushing up the NASDAQ 
NASDAQ further than the S&P and the Dow today because, again, the NASDAQ is a tech-heavy index. So you guys can see, if I go back to Apple, we'll talk about that very quickly because I'm sure a lot of you guys want to hear about Apple since it was in the title of today's video. So overall, guys, we've been talking about this channel on Apple between $200 and $210, and we briefly actually broke that uh, a couple of days ago. It might have been yesterday if I just double check very quickly for you guys to make a hundred percent sure here. Um, yeah, it was it was yesterday, right? We gapped down from 205 over the weekend down to about 199. We dipped down to about 197 earlier this morning. And from there, guys, we saw a nice little swing into the market open today. We actually opened up at about $200. And then when we aggressively broke out of that resistance, because the $200 resistance, obviously, we broke below it, making it a resistance again. But we broke above it this morning, making it another support. And and we pulled back and we retested 200 and launched off of it. And the NASDAQ at that point was doing quite well. You know, this gave me incentive to get into Apple, maybe a bit prematurely, but I did get into Apple at about $200.32. And before we do get deeper into my personal strategy with this swing trade, you know, let's take a look again at that channel. Notice how $200, this was a resistance back in the beginning of April. It was a resistance, or rather it was a support back in November. And you see all the trend lines that I've drawn out throughout the uh, stock chart here on Apple. These all signify support and resistance levels, right? And now again, we saw the dip below one, uh, 200, making it another uh, resistance, but now we're breaking above it, making Making it a support again. And the fact that, again, we retested that level this morning, that gave me um, some hope to, or rather the, uh, the uh, what's it called, guys, the confirmation to put, you know, some money in for a swing trade into Apple. So the whole entire idea here, guys, you know, is to scale into Apple, you know, slowly as it continues its uptrend. So we got the pullback from 205 down to about 200. That was a 3% pullback. We got the hold at a higher low here. You guys can clearly see it on the 20-day one hour. We're trending above the 180 SMA here. We got the bounce on the support at 200, which is very, very good. All signs are pointing here for recovery in Apple's stock. And now, before I add more money into it, again, I'm in at $200.30. Before I add more money, ideally, I would want to see a breakout of this 50 SMA resistance here on the 20-day one hour chart. That is currently the plan right now. And notice how over the past couple of weeks, really in the month of June, 200 was a strong level of resistance, 200 to about $201, roughly where we are right now. So a breakout of the 50 SMA, not only would it break the 50 SMA of resistance, obviously, right? It would also break us above this old resistance here. And at that point, I have no doubts that Apple can run at least in the short term up to $205 where I do plan on selling. So that's the goal right now on Apple. I'm liking the way it's closing the market right now. I'm up almost a dollar per share at the time that I am recording this video. It's going to close, it seems like, here at nine minutes at a good spot. So the pop tomorrow, that would be ideal to add more money. And guys, I know I talk about this a lot. Honestly, I don't think I've actually talked about it in a while, but when I swing trade stocks, I scale into my position. So let's say, you know, my Apple position, this one I took today, let's say we open up tomorrow at 197. The fact that I only scaled into the position with 10, 20% of my goal position size, you know, I can cut losses and lose less money than if I jumped in with the position size of 100 percent of my goal position right off the bat, right? If that makes any sense. And that's kind of how I mitigate my risk and control my capital and control my losses when I swing trade. I scale in, I use 10, 20%, add another 10, 20%, add another 10, 20% as the trend continues to confirm itself rather than hopping in right away with the full amount um, because you can lose money on that, uh, doing that if, if, you know, the trade doesn't go your way and Initially, which does happen when you trade, guys. Not every trade, not every stock goes your way. As you guys saw in yesterday's video, I took a loss on Intel, right? That was a swing trade that I was in. It didn't go my way. I scaled into it. I took a little loss. I did not lose as much as if I 
or if I put all my money into it at uh, you know off the uh, from the get go, right? So that is it on Apple, guys. I'm really liking it right now. I'm being patient with it, and I do see a lot of potential in it here over the next couple of days. So rapid fire now. Let's take a look at some other stocks and ETFs, guys. So Amazon is the next one we want to talk about here. Remember in yesterday's video, I was talking about 1960, that resistance. If we were to break that, we would be filling the gap up to the next spot, which is by those all-time highs at about $2,050. And guys, what is happening? Exactly that. Take a look. We broke 1960. We aggressively broke that today. You guys can see the stock's up $40 right now, and it's continuing to climb into the close of the market. And now we're pretty much just trending in between this channel from, you know, again, 1960 up to those all-time highs. So ideally right now, guys, RSI's a bit overbought. I would like to see a cool off here, maybe a retest at 1960, 1970, a hold at that spot. And then from there, we could end up getting into Amazon for a potential um, trade, right? So Amazon looking pretty good today. LABU ended up doing quite well today. I did call this one out yesterday, but to be completely honest with you guys, I did not end up trading it, but it is looking good heading into tomorrow's session. We held that 180 SMA. We broke above that 50 SMA resistance now. It seems like we're holding it as a new support. That is looking very, very solid. And for those of you guys that don't know, LABU trades based upon SPS IBI. SPS IBI is an S&P 500 uh, rather, an S&P Biotechnology Select Industry Index. Whenever this is going up, LABU is going up in price as well. So LABU, watching that one very closely tomorrow. CL right now, it finally seems like it's heading into the $58 level. And this is what we need to see before we fill the gap up to $60. But the one thing that's a bit alarming right now is that we're struggling to get out of that 50 SMA here on the 184-hour chart that is a level we need to break out of before we can fully full uh, fill the gap up to $60 and UWT guys is an ETF that trades based upon crude oil whenever crude oil is going up UWT is going up at a 3x rate and if crude oil does fill that gap UWT is going to have a lot of margin of profit there so um, another one here guys natural gas today we got the pullback a couple of days ago, or um, you know, on the 5th of July over the past couple of days. We saw that cool off. Seems like we're holding that 180 SMA here as a new support, but we are also kind of making a uh, lower high here at the same time. So we're in a channel right now that is illustrated by those trend lines that I just drew. You know, if we break out of this channel, very simple, guys, that's going to be a bull flag for you guys. You guys goes up whenever natural gas is going up. So I'd be trading that if we were to do that tomorrow. But natural gas, if we go back to it and then we go to the 20 day one hour, you know, if we break to the downside here, maybe we start to fill back down to that, you know, uh, support of the trend line that could be a sign to go um, long on D gas, which goes up whenever uh, natural gas is selling off. So those are just a couple of plays that I'm personally watching tomorrow. Let me know down below in the comment section what are you watching? What stocks did you trade today? Again, what are your thoughts on the market? I would love to know. So if you enjoyed the video, guys, go down below, hit that like button, feel free to subscribe to the channel, uh, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video follow me on instagram join our discord group chat join our facebook group the strive smart communities all of those are linked down below i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching i appreciate you guys as always peace out